we're back. SGC here with Colin. Thank you to your workplace, the Library of Vancouver's. Yeah, we're watching this, what? A whole month before the movie comes out. Yes. No, select theaters too. Select January, January 10th, 1970, directed by Sam Mendes, starring a crap ton of people. I forgot who's in it. Who's in this? Benedict Cumberbatch. All right. First. But he's like King. You're probably gonna see him once. King Thomas. I feel like you're gonna see the Batch like once. Yes, yeah, because I think this movie is what at least what I get from initially is that it's not. You know what I like typically about war movies? They're they try to be like ensemble cast yeah. kind of movies. They move. They move. But I get the sense that this movie is really just about the, the two, journey, like the two, the journey for the two characters. Yeah. So it's very contained, which is nice because when you have a war movie and it's really sprawling and epic, sometimes it's kind of all over the place and it's a lot to take in. Yeah. But if you have that really contained story, focused, tight story of just two guys making their way across the battlefield. Yeah, we Cross got new lines. I'm, I'm pretty excited for it. Yeah. And I mean, it keeps the it keeps the pacing. In who terms who of is the two dudes? I don't know his name, but he plays King Tom in Game of Thrones. He's popping up in a lot of things right now. Oh. He was in The King too. So he's probably some King. rich kid. Sure. I don't know the other guy, but. Uh, but yeah, 1917. Looking forward to it. I didn't know that it was fake one shot, so that's nice. But yeah, so this is like what uh, Birdman. Um, it's gonna be interesting because Birdman has a lot of corners. That's where you can do all your cuts. But here it's like you can do it in the trenches. But what are you gonna do when you're like out in the open? You know, like walk past a pillar, cut. I don't understand why. What is the what? Why? Why this one cut? I wonder if it's gonna lend itself well. To it being a fake one cut, like I would want to know why Mendes was like, yeah, we should do it because we want to blow off money. Because this is much more expensive when you're doing like long shots. Yeah, I don't know. It might be easier. I think it'll be easier to, to say once we see it. But because um... I'm definitely sure that not definitely sure. I'm pretty sure, mostly sure that that running shot costs money. <laughs> like how many how many takes can you do? Probably like maybe. <laughs> with all the stuff going on in the background. I know, and you don't know when they cut it in the beginning or after, so... Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'm excited. This has been a long time where I've seen a movie this and that, so that's nice. The last war movie, true war movie I saw was Dunkirk. Yes. Um, yes. And yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing... Uh, not that I have, Who wrote this? Not that I have anything against Christopher Nolan's You can't movies. write, though. I like... Uh, I don't know about Christopher Nolan's movie. I'm good with them, usually, but I am looking forward to seeing a more straightforward plot. Oh, that's true. Don't care which is like, why? This is a very clear, like, progression. It's a clear yeah. journey of two characters across enemy lines. Yeah. Whereas Dunkirk, we've got the three different... Five layers, hours! Three, three hours! Three, like, temporary wow. layers, and... Yeah. So I'm hoping that it has the same focus and pace as... But the same, like, level of tension as Dunkirk. Because I, I was, like, really sweaty and I tense watching Dunkirk. Yeah. Um, I really felt that the actions and the events that are happening around the characters. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping I get the same thing from this, but to an even greater degree because of how it's shot. And how it's shot and how and what the, where the focus is. Yeah, so it's like, I think it really, like those two guys gotta, gotta really carry the film. It's like, if they're yeah. not engaging, or they're yeah. like, kind of like, eh. Well, and there's gonna be, you know, it's, I think it's the type of performance performances too where like there's not a lot of dialogue right yeah. they, they'll probably have dialogue between them but uh it'll be a lot of yelling a lot of yeah, a lot facial of, expressions a lot of facial like silence uh like real emotional silence so i'm looking forward to it. they're two young guys so it's gonna be good in line you just sprinkle in a little bit of benedict and a little bit of colin firth and probably other people andrew scott mm -hmm. is in it so um, I, don't, I also think like because this is World War One, so it's it's kind of like a change of pace yeah. compared to all those seen World a lot War II, of World War II movies. Stuff. Yeah, I am excited to see World War One with like the weapons and uh, even that one shot from the trailer where they're like it was edited to the sh the sound of the old like rifle shooting. Right, right, right. I enjoyed that. Yeah, so, it made me think of Call of Duty World at War. Oh, that was that was yeah. that was my favorite one. So. So anyways, we've talked enough. We uh, have expectations, but we're being... We're just, we're just excited. I'm excited. 
I didn't think I was going to get to see this movie for a long time. So I didn't even know it was coming out next year. And it was between this and Queen and Slim, which yeah. was a big toss-up for me. I don't know. Now, after we've reviewed the Queen and Slim, I think we know more. But anyway, so that's it. Uh, yeah, this is before. And this is... After! Wow. Before I forget to bring this up, um, holy crap, Christine Wilson Carnes. Carnes. Um, great resume. Because, like, you're working with Mendez, and then now you're going to go off with uh, Late Night in Solo right. with Edgar Wright. Like, holy! So that's out of the way, so good job on that. Definitely going to be on the lookout for whatever she's going to code write or whatever. But, yeah. So, 1917. Um, is this based on a true story? You'll find out. And I think that's a really good tidbit of not telling you if it is or not. It's the thing that keeps you... Because I always hate those like inspired by true stories. So you're like, oh, it's gonna end somewhat positively because someone had to tell the story. But yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. I'm so glad we caught this on the big screen. I swear, if this was on IMAX, I would go again. Yeah, yeah, seeing this in, in AVX or like the biggest format that you can possibly see it in is definitely the best choice. I would see this in IMAX again. It'd be really interesting to see that. Too bad we have lame ass Richmond IMAX. You gotta sit closer to feel bigger. Um, yeah, so the two boys delivered. We got one guy, um, Schofield, who is from Fanta Captain Fantastic, a great movie, you see that? And then we got King Tommen, he was pre pretty, pretty good too. And yeah, I think like what we were talking about before, they delivered like. To do, 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 do dudes, you, you, you get somewhat emotional attachment to them. They drive the story beyond just facial expressions. You really see their like friendship, and, and there's a lot of stuff that goes down. And, and definitely props on both of these dudes. And I definitely will look out for what's his face, Schofield, like whatever he's doing next. Yeah, I'm he's like he reminds me of that Dunkirk silent dude. Yes. Like that yeah. killing he goes on and goes does like killing the sacred deer hole. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would give him extra props for his performance because he I mean after a certain point he carries the film. Yeah. Um and he's the central focus and he yeah he kinda runs with it. Literally. He has a lot of yeah, <laughs> he has a lot of um he has a lot of powerful moments, emotional scenes, um, and he, has, he goes through a lot in a relatively short period of time, so um, with very little dialogue, um, all the characters in the movie, but especially Schofield, yeah. really, really, really delivered a uh, really nice performance. I think like with the writing, uh, Mendez and uh, Kat, Kathy, Catherine, Christ Christy, I think they set up a lot of things, like with this character, his reluctancy to go on this mission, and then just like, okay, you set it up, and bam, he has to start reacting to his surroundings, and reacting to the reality of what's gonna go down. And then props on all the cameos, we got like, what, five? We got Colin Fife, Mark Strong, Colin Firth, Mark Strong, and Benedict Scott, Cumberbatch, yeah. Andrew Scott, Scott and Richard, uh, Richard Madden. Madden. It's a good job on... A couple on Game of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones reunions. Is it though? King Common and... Uh, but then Mas Madden died before he grew up. Yeah. Oh, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, like, props on that. I think the writing is really great in terms of the fact that they wrote it for them, I think. Like, they cast it really well. Uh, yeah, like, it's like what you expect from these guys. I mean, granted, Summer Patch can't play anything, so... Yeah, I feel like all those actors can just drop into a role like this and like you just know that they're going to deliver the I mean, all the first scene, half of it he's not even on camera. Right? Yeah. Like the camera's facing away from him, you can just hear his voice. Yeah. Um, but still, he's Colin Firth, so he knows yeah. how to deliver his lines. Um, yeah. yeah. Performance wise, there's no, it's not really a fault in this film. Like you were saying, he, um, well, so the one thing about well, all the performances are good. Yes, that's good. Uh, one important thing for me is that when it was just the two characters, or even better, when it was just Schofield, the focus is so tight on those characters. Once you start adding, I felt that once you started adding in more characters, you're going to say Liu 
in the back of the uh, cargo van with Schofield and the pirate soldiers, the Sikh soldiers and whatnot. But props on the Sikh soldiers. Yes. Good to include the Sikh soldiers, um, not having everything. And he actually had lines. Yeah. Like, Significant yeah. yeah, I was actually surprised. I thought they were gonna throw them in just be like, here's some background cast. Yeah. I mean, they did do that with the black guy, so yeah. they could have easily whitewashed. Whitewashed everybody, because so, it's like, and, and, you, and, and you wouldn't have said anything. Yeah. Like if you whitewash everybody, it would have been historically accurate, because you're like, who cares which like truck he gets on? Yeah. So, you know, once we start adding in the other characters, I lost interest in those. Not lost interest in the film, but I was less interested in those scenes. And it's just the focusing on the journey of the two characters for just Schofield. He said the same thing with the French woman and the yeah. child. Because I think for me with the French lady, um, it's, it's, it's due to the fact that we've seen so many, so many films. Because, you, you know, cinematic, cin cinematic time runs not real time. So, like, they're exchanged, but, like... Like someone just chopped it up really badly and threw it together. It was so short, but like when you consider it in a narrative aspect, of like no, he needs to whole ass to get out of here. I actually was worried for a moment when they had that really like tender scene. Yeah, I actually was worried that they were going to make out. Yeah, or like fall in love or sit together, and I was just like, no, please, 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 just keep going. It's like you have a mission, you have orders, you have to keep going. Um, so I do agree, that was like one of the weaker scenes in the movie, but it just goes to show like you're really just, when you're immersed in this experience of this film, you're just, you're, you're, you're so focused on what Schofield's doing on his mission to deliver the orders um, to stand down, that when you start adding in all these little detours, it just kind of, those are the moments where the movie kind of lulls a little bit, um, but otherwise the pacing is so... Yeah. And, and this and, easily could have been like a three hour movie. Oh, easily. But to keep it to 117 minutes, yeah. it's pretty impressive. Yeah. I think, like, like this movie feels long, like, because a lot happens. Because I think, like, yeah, you're, you're saying, like, easily three hour film, uh, but the fact that it's, like, fake long, long uh, one take is just, like, makes things, like, you gotta just progress a lot faster. Uh, granted, a lot of the cuts are very obvious, like, when they're passing by, like, some shadows, it's clearly, like, when they, or they leave an end, like, walk through a door or something, or out of, like, a trench, like, you clearly know what they get into is not right beside the trench yeah. in real life. And I think, going back to your point of, like, the school field aspect of things, I think, like, what we were talking about before was, why is this one cut? Like, does it add to the thing? The experience, and I definitely say it does, because I feel like if you edited this, you would have been observers. You would just witness that this will happen. But then now, like with this one cut, you're feeling those little moments of like just walking and just chatting, and then you feel it with Scorpio. That's why I feel like when you're with other people, it just brings you out of that immersion, yeah. and you're sort of like witnessing like a dialogue scene again. Well, I agree, and like again. This is why this movie as a, as a war film is kind of unique for me, because this movie is very much about the moment-to-moment -moment yeah. existence of these two soldiers, these two messengers, um, and it's in those moment-to-moments that when you're when you have the, the long, when you, when you have the fake one change, and you're following these characters often from behind them, like the camera behind them, you're following the have their perspective what they're seeing, you're psychologically connected to the characters, so you're more immersed in the actual world of the film, um, which of course, just for a war film, it's pretty impressive, because like I've mentioned to you, war films can easily be super ambitious in scope and scale, they can be really sprawling and epic and kind of all over the place. Yeah. And in this movie, like, as the viewer, you have a choice. If you want to focus on Schofield and Blake, or if you want to look at, around all the stuff that's happening on the sides of the frame, you can. Um, which is why your comparison to, so, right, your right, right. contrast with... My antithesis. Yes. I'm finally using my literary terms. Liter liter so literary. contrasting it with Saving Private Ryan is, is a really good... Yes. 
that movie is like in your face, yeah. gore, excessive, crazy, but great still. And I think. And you're very up close to the action in that movie. Yeah. Whereas in this movie, you're, you, you are immersed in it, but you're also kind of detached in a way. Um, and, and it's just more restrained in what it does. So you have, you know, yeah, there are explosions and there's gun battles and stuff like that, but it's really. It's not really about it's, that. It's kind of funny that, like, a gun battle or explosions in a war film can be subtle. But yeah. I think that really is like the trick of these movies. Yeah. It really is. They really are subtle. Yeah. Um, and it, yeah, you're right. It's not really about that. Yeah. yeah. And I think like it lends itself well because it's a World War One film, so you're much more forgiving about like technical prowess in terms of like sharp shooters. Like I love that scene where he's in that French town and then he's like going up to the church and it's like flame on. And there's like dudes, dude, and I was like, oh my god, did he find a friend? Like, yes, he's safe. Like, tense moment, it's over. But it's like, nope. Boom. And that's, and two, also, this movie just shows the realities of war, especially when you're a lone soldier behind enemy lines. Like, you're gonna come across people and you're not gonna know whether that person is friend or foe. And yeah. I don't know, I just, maybe, I'm sure that it has been shown in war films. But I just noticed a lot of different things in this movie compared to other war films I've seen, and I think it is just that um, bringing the focus down, like grounding it a little bit more, rather than focusing on like the big, big um, event, like big scale events. Yeah. And that, and I even like like the war stuff is subtle, but I think the character growth is very subtle as well. Because like we have that. A heart to heart moment about going home or not, and then the movie ends in that way. And I feel like, okay, yeah. like it, it concludes that in a way where it feels natural that he's done. Now he thinks about this other stuff, and I feel like that growth is not like in your face, like it's not like you know, party har har, war is great, or like let's all be pacifists. Like, there's no like it's not, a, it, it, it's not leading either way, it's just telling you like. It's hard. Like war is hard, but people still gotta live. You just gotta do what you're told. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I'll say is, one thing I appreciated about this movie is that, just on, on like a symbolic level, you had the uh, the beginning, the opening shot. They're taking a nap in a field of flowers. Yeah. The wild, the tall grass, yeah. the flowers. Right. They're leaning up against a tree. That's the way the movie ends as well, obviously with one character rather than the two of them, but yeah. it's a nice like closed circuit, right? Yeah. Um, it's a nice conclusion. But also too, like they have that conversation in when they initially get to the abandoned um, housing compound, right after crossing the or coming out of the bunker, yeah. and they're walking through all the cherry trees are chopped down, yeah. right? You have all the cherry blossoms, which again he sees when he's floating down the river. Yeah. And he kind of that gives him the motivation, reminds him of his friend, gives him the motivation to like keep Where going, you, go? you know. Um, so I really appreciated those little like poetic touches yeah. as well. And I think that's just like and with that too also is that in this movie you have shots of like Really, really like beautiful. <coughs> sorry, really beautiful tender shots. Yeah. Of like delicate beauty uh -huh. compared with what we see in construction, the uh -huh. shots of like the empty artillery uh -huh. shells and the deserted machinery and the upturned earth and all the wire and dead bodies and rats yeah. and ruined um, cathedral arches. And I would say like it lends itself well that it juxtaposes so much. Yeah. Versus like, I know like, what's the cinematographer's name? Roger. Like he did what? Skyfall and Spectre. And I think there were shots, but those shots were so out of nowhere. They're like, oh my god, it's so beautiful. And then James Bond. But here it's like, you know, beauty out of this destruction. And yeah. they lend, it builds to like, you know, the war narrative of like, like when, when a war passes through, this is what happened. But yet there's beauty and destruction. Yeah. Well, it's it's a cycle, right? Like, there's there's 
life and death, there's uh, destruction, there's rebirth, yeah. there's... And then, yeah, well, the shots are composed in a way that really emphasizes that, uh, which is nice, because it... I don't know if you can have, like, an elegant war film, but if you could, this would be, this it. Would be it. Yeah, subtle all around, but it drives the point home. And a uh, simple story, but yet it still has its complications. Simple story, but it's effective and, it's, and it, the tension is maintained throughout, right? Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, I swear, like, when they first left, and it was two of them, I was like, okay, someone's gonna get shot. And they start using, like, these generic shots of, like, other war films where someone's gonna get shot. Like, yeah. when one of them's outside, the other guy's, like, alone, <laughs> like, and then they, 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 they like, um, they frame it, um, so it's like, like one of those, like, one of those, like, he's gonna get sniped and he flies away or something. Yeah. Yeah, so all around, great stuff, glad I caught this. Definitely, hopefully, it'll be on IMAX, like, like Cineplex better, I don't know, I'll really hope they somehow convert this into IMAX and so well. So hopefully by the time this comes out, we'll have some IMAX news or something. Yeah. And yeah, definitely I would say don't be like, oh, war film, never gonna watch. But I feel like it's more of a just, just like men, right? Like ordinary folk put into like extraordinary circumstances and do you deliver? Do you keep persevering? Or, or all that, like that kind of stuff. And I think it is different. The fact that they told a World War One film, World War One story, in the midst of like you know, you know, thousands of World War Two films that you would only remember. Like I don't remember the first time. I don't remember if I've seen a World War One film. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I can't think of one off the top of my head. So I don't think I've ever seen. One. Yeah. So I think it's actually like. That going back to um, just historical accuracy, like seeing the seats around or the black people, and, or like how um, like you know, shooting from the hip, you miss all the time, and it's like totally yeah. acceptable. Like it, it's like that. It, like you were saying, it's subtle. Like the tension is still there. You know he's not gonna get shot because of like you know narrative circumstances. But at the same time, he's like, oh, dang, dang. And the way it's shot, oh yeah, the soundtrack, holy crap, the soundtrack. Yeah, the music was great. The music was great. Like, it really lent itself well. It was like a natural, like, thing. Like, it you was, were feeling it already, but it they was, just, like, it bring was, you more. It was quiet in the appropriate moments. Yeah. And then it was really kind of grand and majestic yeah. in, like, the sequence, for example. Like, we are talking about the sequence when he comes out of the abandoned um, house, and, or in the French town, and it's all the ruined... Uh, all the ruins of civilization and the flares are going off and the lights going off yeah. and the music oh, that, is that really or yeah. orchestral and like grand. Yeah, I'm 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 thinking uh, nomination for uh, cinematography, sound design, sound mixing, sound editing. I was I was trying to think of um, Sam Mendes trademarks, but I don't really see him as like an auteur director. Like he's not like a Edgar Wright or like a. Wes like where, Anderson, yeah, where he's gonna put a or stamp. Quentin Tarantino. I don't, I don't know what his like stamps are, if or if he has any. But every movie I've seen that he's made is just like a deeply affecting. It's like a deeply effective emotional, personal movie. Like all his movies feel kind of poignant. Which I like now. So even and like he, he brought that. Sky is going to James Bond. Yeah. Like, kudos, right? but, yeah. Well, anyways, I'm um, glad we caught this. What's next? Yeah, Mendez, keep going. I wish he put out more films, but he's only done 10. Yeah, maybe it's uh, time to go back and watch the stuff. But yeah, so we uh, basically watched this a uh, man to man. It's like a month and 10 days. So thank you. Yeah, I guess, I guess Universal is pretty much like we got the Bag, so uh, let's just release it. I think uh, they can be pretty confident with like a big amount of Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so good job, everybody.
So uh, keep watching, keep liking, and subscribe and share. Sharing is caring, and uh, that's it for this before and after of 1917. Out.